if you want to prove that one thing is greater than another, okay? Um, the easiest way, even though it seems like there's not much difference here, right? The easiest way to prove that one thing is greater than another is to prove that if you take this difference, the difference will be positive, okay? Now you're like, algebraically, what did we just do? I just subtracted b from both sides, so it's like no big deal, right? Um, but what does this mean geometrically? Let me think about it by putting these on a number line, okay? Now, if you've got like, you know, 0 over here, minus 1 over here, going that way. So you negatives and you positives, okay? I want to prove that A is bigger than B, right? Another way of saying that is that A is to the right of B, okay? Now, when you're taking a difference, when you're subtracting, right? The order matters, which one you subtract from the other, right? Because A minus B and B minus A are not the same thing, okay? So... To rephrase this, instead of saying algebraically, these are both algebraic statements which are totally equivalent, okay? To prove that, I'm going to say it geometrically, that A is to the right of B. Okay? A is to the right of B. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, how, would you, how would you word this geometrically? Come in. Okay, now think about this carefully with me. Um, if this is the geometric meaning of this algebraic inequality, how would you put into a sentence this inequality? How would you word it? Hmm. Hmm. When you subtract b from a, the result is positive. Ah, now you, that's true, but you're still <laughs> speaking <laughs> algebraically. You're still speaking algebraically. I'm trying to think in terms of left and right. A is further away from a zero than B. That's, possible. Uh, that's not a bad way to say it. But then again, I could have it the other way, couldn't I? You know, zero. No, no, no. I said A is further away. Oh, from I zero know, but that's that's saying that's not really a translation of this, isn't it? It's kind of like now I'm introducing lots and lots of sentences which aren't each individually equivalent to this, right? Yeah, yeah. This is coming back to that kind of thing. Okay. Here's the way I would say it, okay? A minus B, what does it represent? It represents a distance, okay? It represents how far I have to go from B to A, not vice versa. Mark that. It's the distance from B to A, okay? So I'm going to say the distance from B to A, right? That distance is positive. That's what I'm going to say. Okay, how can it be negative? Because if I go, if I have to go the other way, right? From B to A. If I have to go from B to say minus one. Okay, now, see, I'm trying to get in terms of left and right here, right? I'm going to the left, right? Or I could say, um, I have to travel right. I have to travel to the right to get from B to A. Are you happy with that? Now, the reason why it's, um, it's more in our interests, right, to say things like this than this, okay, is that it's actually quite easy to prove that things are greater than zero, okay? Uh, we know all kinds of properties that will help us, and the most important one is squaring, okay? So what I can say is if I have some kind of... Squaring. 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 Oh. Squaring. Oh. Not, <laughs> not coarse language. Squaring. Wait, was that anyone, is sorry, was everyone cons confused about squaring? Because I thought square rooting. Like no, you, you can square root squaring. something that's positive and you can't square root something that's By the way, positive. the verb of square, square root is a, is a noun, and the verb of square root is taking the square root, not square... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now, here's the important thing. If I can establish that something is square, then I can say that it's greater than or equal to zero, right? And furthermore, if I already know that um, A isn't equal to zero, okay, then I can say that unequivocally, it must be positive when I square it. Okay, does that make sense? Because the only way, and I'm actually going to introduce a weird little um, 
bit of notation here. Um, the only way that I can get the equality, right, if I can reach the boundary for zero, okay, um, is if and only if a is zero, okay. So there's a, there's a short form for this. Saying if and only if um, is um, turns out to be a really really common statement in inequalities, okay. So it means if and this is the only way it can possibly happen, right? If and only if a equals zero. So the shorthand for this is if with an extra f on the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay, because it's about logic, it's a logic thing. Do you mean a squared equals zero if and only if a equals zero? Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. Wait, hold on. Uh, a squared is equal to zero. There we go. Okay, that's what I meant to say. Thank you. So that boundary, right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so this is this is the opposite case. Right? This is the opposite case. Okay. So I can only hit the boundary if I if I had that specific boundary. 